Welcome to this introductory video on the nervous system, which will provide foundational concepts for understanding some of the structures and functions of both the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. It is not intended to be exhaustive, but rather to be introductory to this basic tissue type. I hope you enjoy it. Nervous tissue controls the activities of the body by sending, receiving, coordinating, and integrating information from other tissues within the body, as well as information from outside the body. Nervous tissue is classified into the central nervous system, consisting of the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which broadly speaking consists of peripheral motor and sensory nerves and clusters of nerve cell bodies called ganglia. Let's use the spinal cord as an example of the histology of the central nervous system. The spinal cord extends from the brainstem to the lumbar region and encloses a central canal which contains cerebrospinal fluid, often abbreviated as CSF. As already stated, it receives and sends motor and sensory information from the rest of the body, and you may also hear of its role in reflex arcs. Here is a cross-section through a lumbar spinal cord. It is blue because it is stained with Luxol Fast Blue, which you can Google if you are interested in learning more about this special stain. Isn't it beautiful? It is divided into gray matter, which is composed of neuronal cell bodies and forms a central butterfly shape, and white matter, which is composed of myelinated nerve axons. Very generally speaking, afferent sensory nerves enter the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, synapse, and produce effects through efferent motor nerves that leave the ventral horn of the spinal cord. There, of course, will also be communication to and from the brain with sensory nerves and motor nerves. It is not the intent of this video to get into the details of these tracks. Rather, I am indicating these peripheral, sensory, and motor nerves as an introduction to the peripheral nervous system, which we will look at in more detail in a couple of slides. Just before we move on to the peripheral nervous system, I wish to expand on and elaborate a little bit on some of the terminology that we use. As already indicated, an afferent sensory nerve from the peripheral nervous system enters the dorsal root of the spinal cord, synapses, and an efferent motor nerve leaves the ventral horn of the spinal cord. From here, there are two more concepts I wish to introduce. The first is that the entire collection of afferent sensory and efferent motor nerves compose a peripheral nerve, as indicated here. The second is that before entering the dorsal root of the spinal cord, afferent sensory nerves synapse in structures called ganglia, and the dorsal root ganglion is indicated here. So keep in mind that peripheral nerves consist of sensory and motor neurons and that ganglia are collections of nerve cell bodies. So let's now move on to examples from the peripheral nervous system, that is, nerves and ganglia. Here is a beautiful longitudinal section through a sciatic nerve. When looking at nerves, you can apply the same spaghetti logic for longitudinal and cross sections that we did when I introduced it in the muscle video. This light micrograph nicely demonstrates that peripheral nerves are composed of bundles of nerve fascicles and that these bundles of fascicles are bound together by connective tissue to collectively compose a peripheral nerve. If we move to higher magnification on this slide and look more closely at an individual nerve fascicle, you can see that the wavy eosinophilia is the individual nerve fibers traveling through the fascicle. There are also a lot of basophilic nuclei, and these are the nuclei of a vast number of cells, including Schwann cells, fibroblasts, and other supporting cells. You would need to use special stains to distinguish these cells. Now, let's look at a peripheral nerve in cross-section. What this means is that we will look down the length of the nerve fascicles in the manner, that is, in cross-section, 
that you will most routinely see them in many of the connective tissues and organs of the body. Here is an example of a peripheral nerve in cross-section. Begin by orienting yourself to this slide, which is a peripheral nerve composed of bundles of nerve fibers. Each of these bundles is called a fascicle, and we can see five of them in cross-section. As you already know, these fascicles are composed of both efferent and efferent nerves. Beginners at histology often have difficulty identifying fascicles of peripheral nerves in sections of tissues or organs, and I am rather fond of saying that you are looking for structures that look like a whole bunch of nothing, but an encapsulated, by connective tissue, bunch of nothing. Finally, let's take a quick look at what a ganglion, a collection of nerve cell bodies, looks like. If we compare the schematic on the left with the light micrograph on the right, we can see fascicles of afferent sensory nerves entering a dorsal root ganglion, and then we can imagine them synapsing and traveling on to the spinal cord. We can look at this if we magnify a part of this ganglion, then we can clearly see the wavy fibers that are composed of afferent and efferent nerves entering the ganglion, and then we can imagine them synapsing with the beautiful large neuronal cell bodies, a few examples of which are circled here in blue. This concludes this introductory video on the histology of central and peripheral nervous systems. Thank you for watching. You may also view the virtual slides used in this video by clicking on the UBC Virtual Histo link in the banner of this YouTube channel.